Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, BBUVA for this uh, invitation to share with you our sovereign green bond framework and our plans for the launch of the first sovereign green bond in Colombia. Um, also, thanks to, to Shema, Jose Maria Leal, uh, for, for moderating this this discussion um, and, and a big uh, welcoming remark to all the people that are connected with us today. Um, we're going to proceed in two stages. First, I'm going to go through a presentation that we have prepared for you. The presentation is very detailed and we did it like that on purpose so that on your spare time, you can go into you know, as much detail as you want. But I want to focus on the main four pillars of this presentation. The first one is how this effort of an ESG strategy is embedded in the law and the institutions and the policy making in Colombia, what, what the technical people call full alignment with the green policies in a country. Second, we're going to talk about our framework, which was a review internationally and how it's aligned with the green bond principles of, of the International Capital Market Associations. Then we're going to go a little bit more into detail in the, in the categories that, that we have identified in our sovereign green bond uh, framework. And finally, we're going to share with you some of the details that, uh, that we're going to use for the launch of the first local auction for green tests uh, on September the 29th. So let's start. Um, this, uh, uh, what you have in front of you is the, um, is the cover of our sovereign green bond framework. Uh, it's a cover that, that says a lot about our approach to ESG. We are probably the second most biodiverse country uh, in the world, and, and and we wanted to portray that uh, in this in this in this in this cover. We not only have the hummingbirds and the, and the forests and the and the water, so um, we're we're very happy with that with that cover that you see right there. Um, okay. The, the first thing that, that I want to convey to, to investors locally and internationally is that this is not going to be a one-off effort. This is fully embedded in the law and in the institutions of Colombia. We're probably one of the few countries that have taken this approach. We went last year to Congress, to Congress and we passed a law when we were passing the borrowing law, we decided to include provisions that will make mandatory and institutional that before we issue a thematic bond, the Minister of Finance will have to go through a thorough process of certification, of elaboration, of a framework. And we decided in the thematic world to start by the letter E in ESG, environment, and that's law 20. 73 of 2020. Then we have to adopt that framework by a resolution of the Ministry of Finance. And all of this is public information, but I wanted to convey with you in this first slide that this is not a one-off effort. This is a, something that we are going to give it continuity. That is not a policy of a government. It's a policy of a state that seeks to abide by all the strictest standards of quality control for green allocation of investments. You will also see this materializing in our famous financing plan. When we present to the world the sources and uses tables, you will always see from now on, in 2021, in 2022, and so on and so forth, an allocation of auctions to green tests. And you will see it right there in the left part of our sources and uses table from now on. Now, what is unique or particular about Colombia 
And I will mention three or four policies because these green bonds at the end of the day, what are looking for is to close the gap for financing to abide by our commitments in the Paris Agreement and so others. We started with a, with a very moderate commitment. We wanted to reduce 20% the, the um, greenhouse emissions by 2030. And recently, the government made a deliberate commitment to increase that goal to 51% reduction of uh, greenhouse gases by 2030. And, and, and you will see Colombia is not a big polluter when you see it in the, in the context of the world. Our emissions account for some, somewhere around 200, 290 tons of CO2. Uh, but what is interesting in Colombia is that two-thirds of the emissions come from land use from land use, which is this gray line that you see in the chart on the, on the right-hand side. So when, more in advance, we're going to talk about a, a taxonomy that we're building, and you will see how we're going to have a big, big emphasis on land use in agriculture, silviculture, and forestry. So that's number one. We, we have those commitments, and, and that's our first guiding line to, to abide. The second issue that is very important in the case of Colombia is tackling the deforestation. And we have devised a series of policies in the Colombian law and institutions to achieve uh, that. It has to do with the legislation. It has to do with the control of illegality. We have a very forward-looking law that actually declares that crimes against the environment can be considered felony and that you have to restore uh, those damages. We have uh, monitoring, we have technology, we have social investments. And, and on the right-hand side, you will see that we are walking our talk. When we came to government, the hectares of deforestation per year reached a devastating peak of 219 hectares deforestated in 2018. And you will see how in the first year of our administration, we decreased that rate by 10%. In the second year of our administration, we decreased that rate by another 19%. And yes, in the last year, we have a, a small blip in, in, the, in the reforestation area, but when you compare, when we took government in 2018 to present, we have reduced deforestation by 20% through all these mechanisms that we have on the left-hand side. And finally, we have recently approved two laws in Congress that are extremely important. On the left-hand side, and this is like two or three weeks ago, we approved the energy transition law, an energy transition law that is seeking to transform our energy matrix, which is already very renewable. Our energy matrix is almost 70% hydro water. But you will see that in 2018, when we came to government, only 0.2% of our sources of energy were non-conventional renewable. And this new law that we have already approved when we finish government next year, the share of non-conventional renewable energy sources is going to increase to 14%, 14%. And we can talk more in the Q&A, if that's of interest to you, about the mechanisms that we have to achieve that. Because this is not only a law. We are developing markets. We are developing auctions with supply and demand of renewable energies in Colombia. And on the right-hand side, two years ago, we also passed a clean transportation law that has a particular emphasis in converting our fleet of public buses 
and uh, public transportation vehicles. I just wanted to give you a sense of the statistics, and, and this is from the private sector, on the number of electric vehicles that are purchased in Colombia. You will see that three or four years ago, it was not even a thousand vehicles that came into Colombia. But very rapidly, in 2019, 20 and 21, today we're approaching somewhere around 9,000 vehicles. And this is done through a very strong system of incentives, to a very strong system of certification. And here, we're talking about electric vehicles and hybrid electric vehicles with a big emphasis on electricity rather than, for example, uh, gases or, or steam fuel. So closing this first section, what I want to tell you is first, this is an institutional effort that is embedded in the law and in institutions in Colombia. Two, what is particular about a green efforts in Colombia? We like to cut greenhouse emissions. We like to tackle deforestation. We want to make our energy matrix more renewable. And finally, we want to transform the fleet of vehicles in, in Colombia. Let me go into the framework. The framework, as, as you all know, has four main pillars, which are the process for selection and evaluation, the use of proceeds, and things about reporting. In, in terms of the use of proceeds, we want to highlight a couple of things. First, deliberately, Colombia made an effort to guarantee you that all the projects and the eligible categories are investment expenditures. This is a framework in our methodology that does not include current expenditures. Some other countries do it and that's fine. Here, we want to guarantee that anything that you invest on has to do with CAPEX, either research and development, either the construction of uh, water sanitation plants, but is not focused on current expenditures, is on investment expenditures. And the other things are more standards with the, principle, with the global bond green principles. Uh, for example, this is not full earmarking. It doesn't necessarily mean that every single peso that we're going to go is marked to a particular project. We have the process of association, like you have in the frameworks of Netherlands, of Chile, of France, in which what we can guarantee you is that we are only investing the proceeds from the issuance into eligible green expenditures. And for that, we have the flexibility to associate those expenditures in T minus one, meaning in 2020, in T, which is 2021, and in T plus one, 2022. This is very important for you to know, and we're gonna see in, in a couple of slides, how are we already performing in this uh, management of the use of proceeds. Um, I'm gonna go into a lot of detail in the project and selection process, but what I want to, to convey is that some countries have abided by, for example, climate bond principles or some others have abided by the European taxonomy. What we decided in this first sovereign green bond framework is to use our legal uh, framework and institutions and our policy system to create a system of filters in the Minister of the Environment, in the National Development Planning, in uh, IREAM is, is like an institution that does, does all the surveillance, for example, to measure the hectares of reforestation and deforestation, and to make sure that the selection of process abides by those laws and standards that we discussed previously. We can go into more detail about this. Uh, 
in, 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 in the future slides. But bearing, my, bearing in mind that, that, that our selection process go to the national filters, we also want it to be a standardized and align with international principles to select the projects. And that's what we went into a certification, an SPO, that can guarantee you that our uh, areas for eligible expenditures have to do and are consistent with the green bond principles of the International Capital Market Association. Climate change mitigation, climate change adaptation, natural resource conservation, biodiversity conservation, and pollution prevention and control. We also pass through the filter of the how do you say ODS in, in English? SDGs. Is, SDGs. <laughs> um, sustainable Development Goals. And as you know, the Sustainable Development Goals are 17 categories, but we wanted to focus in the greenest of the categories in the SDGs. For example, SDG 6 that has to do with water, 7 that has to do with clean energy, 9 with um, Business with environmental friendly infrastructure, uh, 14 again with water, 15 with um, biodiversity and land use, 13 which is action for climate change. So these two things we abided and we fully align with the GVPs, with the Green Bond Principles, with the SDGs from the United Nations, and we are working already in a Colombia green taxonomy. Some of you may ask, what is that? It's a dictionary of what is green. It's not finished, but what I can announce to you is that we are publishing the technical documents that we have already built with the support of the World Bank, with the support of IFC, because this also has to do with the private sector next week. Even you, wherever you are in the world, will be able to review these documents and provide commentary. When we issue our next round of sovereign green bonds next year, we probably are going to be in good shape to be able to guarantee you that we're not only following the green bond principles of the International Capital Market Association, the greenness of the SDGs, but we will also have a green Colombia taxonomy and it's a taxonomy that is inspired and aligned with the European Union taxonomy, but that has a twist, that has a focus on a more biodiverse country, like is, for example, Colombia. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on the, on the categories for green eligible expenditures, because we're going to go over them in the, in the next section of the presentation, but are the the classical categories that, that, uh, that, that we have, uh, clean transportation, uh, sustainable agriculture, uh, biodiversity, circular economy, natural disaster management of risk, sustainable water, sustainable buildings, and non-conventional renewable energy. Um, this is probably one of the most important slides that I wanted to show and share with you. It tells you two things. First, Colombia is really fully aligned with the most innovative efforts in the world to tackle environmental, social, and governance priorities. I added the dates in which all the frameworks of these countries were published. You will see United Kingdom in June 2021, Germany last year in August, Spain recently in July 2001, Chile in May 2019, and Colombia in July 2021. So we're fully in tune with the highest standards of the sovereign bond issuers, not only in, in emerging markets, but also in OECD countries. And second, and most importantly, when you buy, or when you invest in a sovereign green test in Colombia, you're probably purchasing one of the most diversified 
portfolio of green expenditures in the world. You will see how, for example, in, in Chile, uh, the portfolio that they are putting for, for green issuance is, is, is very concentrated in transport, for example, is very concentrated in water, sustainable buildings. Uh, in Germany, it's similar. In UK, it's similar. But when you look at Colombia, we basically have projects eligible in every single category and in categories that are very sensitive, like, for example, biodiversity. Uh, so this is a, a very important um, slide that we wanted to share with you. This is public information. You can read it. You can compare it. Um, and the intention is that, you know, these are our benchmarks for green bond issuance. We consider those frameworks very strong, and I'm sure you consider them too. Uh, finally, on reporting, uh, we have uh, committed in our framework to a full disclosure on two areas. One, on placement and allocation of resources, and this is conducted, as it says in the slide there, by an external auditor but also on a performance and e impact report. And we will do that until all the proceeds from the green bonds have been fully associated and allocated. Um, until here, we talk about the framework. Let's talk a little bit about the projects, which I'm sure is one of the areas of most interest to you. Um, This is probably this, another very important slide because this gives you a sense of what is our green portfolio of eligible expenditures. We basically have something in the order, have identified in the general budget of this year expenditures eligible for 2 trillion pesos. Um, a little bit more than $500 million, the equivalent, give and take, depending on the exchange rate, distributed in 27 projects, 27 projects and six categories. The categories are right there. I'm not going to read them again. But a couple of things that I want to highlight. The first one is that Colombia is probably the third largest water intensive country in the planet. I think probably with Brazil and, and maybe Venezuela, Colombia is all about water, not only in rivers, but also, as you know, we have access to the two oceans in the Pacific and in the Atlantic. And it's not surprise, it's not surprise that 40% of our eligible expenditures are in the area of sustainable water management use and sanitation. Uh, then, at 27%, is, is looking to clean and sustainable transport. 16%, and we're very proud of this, because as we have seen in other countries, uh, the issue of biodiversity accounts for 16%. Uh, and we're going to see examples of this uh, later on. Energy is also 14%. And then a circular economy and sustainable agriculture are there with a, a smaller share, but nonetheless important. And this is what is, what is key. If you, when you invest in a green test on September the 29th, we have already a system of tracking that guarantee you that 35% of this portfolio is already being associated in 2020. And by the end of this year, if we do just a simple <laughs> arithmetic operation, probably more than 70% of the whole portfolio is going to be fully allocated and associated in 2021. 
Because a common question by investors, and I, and I, and I fully understand, is what if there is under execution? What if the projects are cut from the budget? What we are saying is that we are targeting projects, not only that are truly green, but also that are already in a phase of execution that we can measure and that we can report to you. But now we're going to go into examples. I guarantee you that there is plenty of information in the presentation and beyond, but I just want to give you sort of a flavor of, of all the categories. In terms of water management, uh, we're tackling three of the most water and green intensive SDGs, 6, 12, and 14. Uh, you have examples of indicators that we track in the, in the middle column, for example, you know, amount of water that is treated, number of projects that look for sanitation, and, and we have a big emphasis on sanitation of water. I uh, somehow shame to say that when we got to government, believe it or not, only 8%, 8% of the water uh, dumped was treated in Colombia. 8%. We have increased that number to 50%. Nothing to be proud yet. And we want to continue moving that percentage further ahead. And that's why a big component of our green bond portfolio go into cleaning the water, sanitizing, sanitizing, don't allowing don't allow the, the, water, the polluted water to get into our rivers and to our seams. And, and we have an example of that. Here, there is a project that, that is a, a sanitation plan in the, in the coffee area of Colombia, where coffee is, is, is produced. You have examples of indicators there. And, and, and here, what I wanted to show you is that this BPIN code it's very important because as an investor, you can click on that code and you can track a fact sheet of the project in the National Planning Department. And we have a BPIN code for every single investment project. So just, if you click here, you will see you are directed to the fact sheet that you have in the National Planning Department for, a, for, for this project. Just an example of how you can, in real time, track, monitor this project. Unfortunately, the, the, the fact sheets are not yet in English, but, but we're moving ahead. We we're probably uh, going to continue putting as much information in the two languages for you. But it's there. Another example is clean transport. And what do you mean by clean transport? In Colombia, we have a policy to co-finance massive transportation systems in the middle and big cities. And this is a country of middle and big cities, cities of more than one million people, for example. The nation, the central government, funds 70% 70% and the local, the subnational cities, let's put it this way, they finance 30%. That's typically the, the scheme. So what are we investing in? We, for example, a target that 70% into maintaining the network of dedicated lanes for buses in cities like Medellin, like Cali, like Cartagena, like Bogota, and we're also co-financing the first line of the Bogota Metro, which you know is probably one of the few cities of more than 9 million people in the world that is yet to build a metro. Well, we're doing that, and, uh, and that's what we're concentrating here, our efforts in this part of the portfolio. Here you see another example, the example of, of the Buses, the blue are probably in Cali. No, this is Medellin, sorry. This is Medellin. 
red ones in, in, in a city like Bogota and so far and so on. You have the indicators there and you have again the BPIN code. You click there and you're directed to the to the to, to, to the fact sheet in the National Planning Department. Let's talk about ecosystem services and, and biodiversity. Uh, this is critical. This is critical because it's the protection of, of our national parks, for example, and the protection of our hectares in the Amazon. And, and I want to give you, and an, 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 you have the indicators there, and I want to give you an example. Look, Colombia, um, the other day I was in a, in a conference, and, and it's probably top five in the world in the share of protected areas as a share of the total area of the country. In that map that you see on the right-hand side, you will see in yellow all our national parks and protected areas. You see that they are all over the country, and especially on the southeast, which is our Amazon, which are our part of the Amazon. Uh, well, many of these uh, proceeds will be allocated uh, to projects uh, to protect these these areas that are critical critical for not only for Colombia but for the equilibrium of, of biodiversity in in the world. Um, this is a non a conventional energy, um, an example of of this area is the, is is a very beautiful project that we have led by the energy department and is that there are several areas in colombia that for different reasons are not connected to the main power grid of the country we call it non-interconnected zones well the minister of energy the ministry of energy has a program to for example uh, you know, install solar panels on the roofs of these uh, chanty towns, let's call it, these towns, so that they are able to self-generate their, their energy. So this is a, it's a classical example. The indicators are there in terms of energy consumption, reduce CO2 emissions, and so far and so on. This is a, an example of a project. Um, this is, um, I'm not sure where this is, but, 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 but anyway, we have different projects like this, and even smaller, because some of these areas are really disseminated uh, across the, the rural areas in Colombia. I'm going to go a little uh, quicker. Uh, the circular economy component is, is, is still developing. We have to be honest on that. It's still only 2% of our portfolio. But one of the projects that we're funding is precisely, uh, is precisely a study, a thorough study on how we can advance in ways to energy uh, programs uh, across the country. Um, and finally, this is... Um, the thing is that I have, which one is this, uh, Camila? Oh, agriculture, uh, sustainable agriculture. Um, this is also developing, and the idea here is to, is to have more sustainable um, crops, for example, to have a more um, environmental friendly forest change. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and we have, for example, in the, in the issue of, of pulp producing, and how you renew these forests and make them more um, environmentally friendly uh, in, in several areas of, of, of Colombia. Again, BPIN code that you can go and track in the National Planning Department. Uh, very quickly, but nonetheless very important, is our second party opinion. Our second party opinion, we did it very thoroughly. We thank the Inter-American Development Bank, which helped us build the portfolio, which helped us build the framework. And then we also thank the World Bank, especially the World Bank Treasury, which outsource, we fully outsource to them to pick a top 
a SPO provider, they actually paid, paid it and selected, and, and we're very happy to, to announce and with the choice that the World Bank uh, helped us make, because VGO, VGO Aries is, to my knowledge, a, um, the ESPO provider of the sovereign green bonds in Chile, for example, that were fir the first in Latin America. And recently I saw that they have been the, the SPO providers of Spain, which actually we are in Spain in, in, a, in a friendly race. We, we have the same um, timeline, not only to build the portfolios and the, and the frameworks, but also, as I know, they are already launching their first sovereign green bond framework right now. What did they say? And, 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 and there is a whole two published reports in English and Spanish in our website, and I'm going to show you where it is. Um, I will probably ask Camila to, to share with the, with the audience in the chat uh, the, the link to our green bond page in the Ministry of Finance. But they say first that we are aligned with the green bond principles of the International Capital Markets Association, not only with the general ones, but as you know, in this year, a few months ago, they actually uh, update, updated the, the principles and, and, and they, they could certify, let's say, the, our al alignment with those green bond principles. Second, and this is very important, and that was the whole first pillar for my presentation, is that as an issuer, Colombia is coherent the framework is coherent with the strategic sustainability priorities, with our policies, with our commitments to mitigate climate change, to promote social progress and sustainable development. Let's put in numbers. We, eh, as you know, VGO has a scale from zero to four, and, and we got a three. Eh, in words, is our contribution to sustainability, so the, the environmental impact, let's call it this way, is considered robust uh, in the ESG risk management framework, um, and the expected impacts are also considered robust. We can discuss in the Q&A what is left to be considered advanced, like for example, the frameworks of, of Chile and, and, and Spain, but nonetheless, we're, we're very happy with the result, and we also see this as a, as a process in which hopefully the next time around which we issue the next round of sovereign bonds we're probably going to get a four and advance uh, and finally uh, in the esg performance as of november 2020 we were considered actually advanced as an issuer colombia as, as, as an issuer in three of the categories we got the full score advance in governance and in environmental responsibility and in social responsibility, we got a three. Uh, finally, and this is important, um, is the details about the, the green issuance of, of our test. Look, we, we had an option to go to global markets or to go to local markets. And we made a delivered decision to go local for different reasons. First, we want our fiscal policy and our financing policy to be greener. This is already generating waves in Colombia because we're given visibility. One of the most underfunded programs, and I have to be honest with you as investors, were the protection of these biodiversity areas where now with this initiative, they are having, or they are in a better position to get more funding for investors like you, that for whom it matters. Second, we want to diversify even further our base of investors with investors like you that are eager to examine uh, initiatives like this. And three, we want to develop a green bond market in Colombia. There are already initiatives from private sector, from public issuers, from private issuers that have already came to market in Colombia. 
but we truly believe that with the reference and benchmarking power of the sovereign, with the liquidity that we're going to be providing in auctions, this market is going to deepen. And there are already many companies that are also uh, aligned with the principles of the Dow Jones Sustainability Index. So what are we doing? Uh, for those of you that are already invested in Colombia, we are going to have Dutch local auctions. And we are very inspired by the example of Germany, which launched the initiative of the twin bonds, so that it's even more transparent the difference between a conventional bond and a green bond. A few months ago, two months ago, we launched a new 10-year benchmark in the local market, our Coltes 2031. It's a bond that, by the way, has been performing really well in terms of liquidity, in terms of activity, not only in the primary market, but also in the secondary. Uh, and this green test is going to be also a twin, a 2031, and we're going to launch it in September the 29th. So this is the first concept that is important for you, is that a, it will have the same tenor, it will have the same covenants, it will have the same legal backing, but it will have a different identifier, the mnemonic, the ICIN, and the green test will also have the advantage of all these certification, green bond framework, portfolio behind it. As, as we're saying, we have a limit of 2 billion pesos, 2 trillion pesos, sorry, uh, to issue. As you know, it is recommended to leave a buffer, so not to issue the full 2 trillion. So we're thinking in something between 1.5 to 1.8 trillion, so that we leave that buffer to, to account for the differences in the execution of the projects. The initial amount of the auction will be 500 billion pesos. And it is important for you who are not familiar eh, to, the, to the features of the Colombian market is that we have two features in Colombia. One, that we can over allocate up to 50% the date of the auction if the bid to cover is equal or greater than 2.5 times. And we have a non-competitive green shoe option nine days after that if the option is in the money, then the primary dealers that bought the auction proportionally can access up to 80% additional of the issuance of the auction. The auction will be held on Wednesday, uh, September the 29th, and we'll see, depending on the activation of these features that I just mentioned, the overallocation and the green shoe, we will probably uh, need a second auction, probably in October or November, depending on the market conditions and depending on the, on the results of the first auction, to complete our threshold of 1.5, 1.8 trillion pesos. So, I think this is a great incentive to encourage you to, to go aggressive in the first auction, because if all these features get triggered, probably in, in a second auction, we will fully complete our target for green bond issuance uh, this year in the local market. We have a very dynamic and liquid system of primary dealers. It's a primary dealer system, many of you already know it, but for those of you who, 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 who don't know it, it is a system that has been performing for 20 years, and it's a system that has 14 participants. And you have everything there. You have locals, you have foreigners, you have, I'm not gonna go over the, the whole list, but I'm just giving you a sense of how dynamic this is and how it's a very competitive system in the 14 participants that are already committed, and I talked to them last week, 
and they are fully on board with this initiative and they see it as a, as a very important innovation for strengthening the local primary dealer system. Um, the liquidity systems that we have for the normal call tests are going to be valid here. These are call tests in which we have repos uh, every day for primary dealers when there are issues about liquidity. We have overnight reports, we have a window for primary dealers, so to make sure that the liquidity goes well. These green tests, as an, they are normal tests, they are also uh, eligible to be repo at the central bank, which is important for, for primary dealers. They, they will be part of the market maker program, so they will have their own score, and um, which, which is a mandatory feature for, for our primary dealer system. They will be traded in, in our local platforms, in the standardized platforms, in the SEN, which is the BANREP platform, and in the uh, stock exchange, which is master trade. Um, and um, um, I think the, the, the main features are, are standard and you probably know them. Uh, important, we're also targeting, since this is not a one-off exercise, but we're already, by the end of this year, placing something to the equivalent of $500 million. We very soon next year, in 2022, once we have already search and review the budget for 2022, which is already in Congress, I think that next year we will be joining the classical uh, indices, for example, the GVI Emerging Market Global Diversify. Uh, we will be joining also Barclays Global Treasury. And also importantly, we, will be, we are in conversations with JP Morgan because uh, given the level of certification that we have, we're seeing if we are eligible for the one-notch upgrade in the JP Morgan Sustainability Bond Index. Um, finally, uh, I just put here the example of Germany, of the twin bonds. As you saw, as you see in the slide, and I promise this is the last, uh, they have issued three green bonds, twin bonds, the classical 10-year, which is this uh, light green, you will see that they, they are accounting for a greenium. At the beginning, the greenium was minimal, two basis points in September 20. But see how the performance of these bonds has been outstanding. And today, the greenium in the 10-year, in the twin bond in Germany, is already seven basis points. And, it's, and that was one of the reasons we also pick the 10-year sector. You see how the performance of the 30-year or the five-year twins, greens, in Germany has been positive, but nonetheless, the 10-year is clearly an outperformer there. Uh, apologies if I took more time than I, that I had, um, but um, back to you, Chema. Thank you very much, Cesar. I think it's been very, very interesting. Uh, we have a lot of questions from the investor. Uh, we're running out of time, so uh, fortunately you have already, you know, respond most of them in, during the presentation. So we're going to try to sum up some of them. And let's start with uh, two or three of them in one. And it's regarding uh, the oil. Uh, it says, how will Colombia address the fact that it is a major oil exporter vis-a-vis -vis environmental concerns? And maybe another one which is uh, similar but related with coal. It says that Climate Action Tracker highlights that Colombia lacks of a strategy to phase out coal. Could you please comment on that? Is the lack of a strategy at odds with achieving Colombia's NDC? Have we got uh, in Colombia, uh, uh, plan the, the phase out coal? Cesar? Absolutely. Well, the, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about, let me answer that with, with data also. Um, I, I, I really like for you to, to, remember, to remember this slide. 
So the first one is Colombia in the scale of the world is not a big polluter. Our contribution to greenhouse emissions is less than 0.5% because we only emit um, nearly 291 tons of CO2. That's number one. Two, we are not sitting down and waiting to become a cleaner economy. And, and I, and I want to talk again about this thing. For example, deforestation. What we want to do is to continue reducing these areas of deforested uh, camps in Colombia. We already, in two years, in three years, have reduced these areas by 20%. And when I have more time next time, I'm going to show you the reverse of this, and is that also we are reforesting areas. So the first part of the policy is tackle deforestation, and the second part of the policy is actually reforesting some of the areas. Policy number one. Policy number two. I have a lot of differences with the rating agencies and, and some analysts, because they say if you export oil, you cannot be green. And when I tell you, look at our energy matrix in Colombia. It's one of the cleanest, probably with Costa Rica. Uh, in the case of Colombia, 70% of our energy matrix is renewable, is hydro. And we are even enhancing further our contribution by incorporating a 14% of our energy generation coming from wind and solar mainly. And this is already happening. And then the other thing is the clean transportation law. So are we going to stop exporting oil? No. We have to be very upfront about that. But what we are is offering to the world the possibility to reduce our carbon footprint in the world by the fact of investing in a country that is protecting the Amazon, that is transforming its energy matrix, that is cleaning its transportation fleet, and so on and so forth. Do you have a phase-out strategy for coal? The truth is the market imposes that phasing out of a strategy. It is no secret that the demand for coal has been not dropping, collapsing. And we are already seeing that in the figures in our balance of payments. It's uh, coal as a percentage participation of our exports is decreasing significantly. And, 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 and the market is, is shrinking for this type of, of, of exports. So are we going to stop exporting coal? Probably not in the short term. But the market itself is making us transition into something different. And finally, for that important question, is that we are diversifying our export basket. Yes, we do, but that is a process that takes time. You, from the, one day to another, don't move from exporting oil to exporting chips for, for something. But I'm going to tell you an example. We are growing significantly in ecotourism which is exports of services. And it's important, those of you who, who are fans of this, you know that Colombia is top three in the world for bird watching, for example. Uh, and those, that diversification of export, we hope, is also helping to tackle the question that, that was raised. Thank you. Thank you very much for your answer, Cesar. Uh, we have many many questions and many of them are related to your plans for that i, I have year. extra time don't worry don't rush i have okay extra time. great thank you thank you uh le let me sum up most of the questions about the plan for for the upcoming years and most of them they go um uh they, they want to ask uh, do you have or what are your plans for issuing or launching bonds in different currencies mainly dollar or euro 
Second, uh, your plans to build a, a green corp in, in the future. And there are also questions about um, if you, of Colombia, is planning uh, launching sustainability link bonds, SLBs, in the future with step ups in case uh, they don't reach the KPIs or step downs in case uh, there is an achievement of the KPIs. Excellent questions. So, our commitment and our decision was to focus on the green in the local market. And we're going to continue doing that. And all the efforts are going to be geared toward providing greater liquidity to that green local market. And there's going to be a cycle of the generation of these green expenditures. We already made a strong effort to cover the budgets of 2020 and 2021. Now we are going in depth into the draft budget bill that is being discussed in Congress as we speak. It's going to be approved in October of this year. So we're going to review it, we're going to certify it, and probably next year, in the second part of the year, we're going to issue hopefully more than two billion, two trillion pesos. Two trillion pesos is not that much, to be honest. But we hope that number to be growing and growing. For example, one of the areas that we have not yet worked is natural disasters. Disasters. We are working on incorporating that as a certified category so that we're going to be able probably to account for a higher share of sovereign green bonds in the future. So we want to tell you that this is not going to be a one-off exercise. We're going to be building this green curve. For now, it's a green point, but that's the way how you start to build it. Um, second, uh, are you going to issue in other currencies? Probably yes, but not the green bonds for now. We're working now on putting together a social and sustainability framework, okay? social and sustainability framework. Of course, when you talk about a social and sustainability framework, the envelope for eligible expenditures is, is much bigger. And if the envelope is much bigger, when we have it certified, we probably go and have a strategy to uh, issue internationally, okay? Now, it's important to clarify also that the framework that got certified in our portfolio is possible to issue domestically and internationally. We have made a decision to prioritize the local market, but it doesn't mean that it's not eligible for, for, for external. And SLBs, um, no yet. We're looking that with interest. We're looking that with interest. We think that probably that is a market that is easier to develop at the corporate level, at the corporate level, and I wouldn't be surprised if corporates in Colombia are moving into that relatively quickly. Uh, at the sovereign level, we want to do few things, but do it well. We want these twin bonds to be launched on September the 29th, to be built, to make them eligible for index inclusion, to make them liquid. And then when we fully reach the amount that we want on the 10 year, we go like Germany, we go with another tenor, we go with another tenor as we go, but always reflecting what is in the budget. We don't want a greenwash, and we prefer to go slow, but surely in delivering to you truly green paper. Okay, thank you. Uh, regarding this topic, uh, there are also questions about Given the current circumstances and, and, and the protests we have had in, in April and May, uh, which is the reason to start with green bonds and not uh, social bonds, uh, aiming uh, social inclusion? Excellent question. Excellent question. As I probably try to convey, this is probably one of the greenest administrations that you have had in Colombia. 
this is embedded in our DNA. We took the effort, believe me, going to Congress, as you probably know, is not an easy proposition in Colombia or anywhere in the world. We went to Congress to grant us authorization to issue green bonds and thematic bonds. We went to Congress for a reforestation deforestation law. We went to Congress for an energy transition law. We went to Congress for a clean transportation law. And why did we go to Congress? Because we want this to become a policy of a state, not a policy of a particular government. We don't want that when Cesar Arias is not in the public credit and Ivan Duque is not at the presidency and Juan Manuel Restrepo is not at the Ministry of Finance, we want this to continue. And believe me, there were encouraging signs in Congress because this got support from opposition parties. Does it mean that we are not concerned about social issues? No, but for that, for now, we have the conventional bonds to fund it. Let me tell you something that is important for some of the people that follow us in this conversation. Why launching it in September 2021? It's not coincidence. We have gone through a lot of up and downs in 2021 in Colombia, as all the market knows. But in this month, we have delivered four things that are critical and that demonstrates the commitment that Colombia has with the market. One, we did a transaction that many people did not believe that we were able to do, which was the divestment of our share in ESA to Ecopetrol for something like 1% of GDP. And we did it in market terms and we did it this month. Second, we were the first country, to my knowledge, that took advantage of the liquidity injection from the International Monetary Fund in SDRs and being able to channel it for fiscal issues by abiding through our constitutional rules. That was something like $2.7, $2.8 billion. Third, against the odds, last week, this week, after having um, dismantled a fiscal reform in May, our commitment to fiscal sustainability and to seriousness in policy making, we went back to Congress and we approved and we approve a fiscal reform that has three pillars. Strengthening the social protection network, generating new permanent fiscal revenue, and modifying a fiscal rule with a deficit and a debt anchor. And it will pass through Congress with a two third majority yesterday. And the fourth thing that is going to happen uh, in September is the launch of the first sovereign green bond in Colombia. So for us, September has a, a lot of meaning because it allowed us to demonstrate to investors, yes, we have challenges, but we have a strong commitment to responsible policy making, to fiscal sustainability, to reforms, and especially to green initiatives. Thank you, thank you for, for your answer. Andres, I don't know if you want to, to go ahead. Yeah, the, the, there, I think that we have just time for, for the last one, Cesar. Thank you for your kindness uh, and the time. Uh, it say, uh, could you provide an estimate of your future plans for green decisions? Well, you have already mentioned, but is this expected to become a growing share of total decisions or will allocation need to be spent first before coming to market again with green tests? Excellent question. So for now we have two trillion pesos. Okay, let's call it $500 million. There's no way the new budget is gonna have less than that. So I think that the, the worst that has happened 
is that in the budget of 2022, we find another 2 trillion pesos, let's put it this way, another $500 million, okay? But if we're successful in what we're doing, we probably, the envelope will be higher, okay? How much? We have to see. We have to look in the budget in 2022, which by the way, is not yet approved, all right? So we have to look into that. But let's say it's, I don't know, 2.5 trillion, 3 trillion, we will incorporate the full amount into the issuance in 2022, and so on and so forth, okay? So it will be building up gradually, uh, and yes, it will be part of the, of the local issuance uh, curve. So green test is something that is here, hopefully, to, to, to stay. Um, the second question is, do you have to wait until you fully execute the projects to issue a new bond? No, not necessarily. Um, as I mentioned, we, have, we, we, we already executed 35% in 2020. By the end of this year, we're probably executing 70% or more. So we're gonna finish very soon the association of these expenditures that we're offering. And as soon as we study the 2022 budget, then we should be ready to go for the next round of, of issuance of green test next year. Um, it took us several months at the beginning, but we think we have a learning curve. Hopefully, we don't have to wait until September of next year to do this. We probably do it earlier in the year, but, uh, but we'll be as transparent as possible with this initiative. Thank you very much, Cesar. Last couple of words before we say goodbye. Well, first of all, um, this is an, an, an initiative that has uh, different objectives. Uh, of course, the first one is to, to, to green our fiscal policy, <laughs> our financing policy. All of our commitments are very uh, ambitious, like those commitments of other countries. And one of the shortcomings of those commitments is that you lack money to do it. We're just providing here an avenue to be able to fund these commitments and abide by them in the case of Colombia. And I hope that the investment community, both locally and internationally, support this effort. It is crucial for you to know that when we pick the local market, it doesn't mean that this is only for Colombian investors. Our test market is fully internationalized. In the fixed rate portfolio, nearly 35% of the holdings of tests are in the hands of foreigners. So you are welcome to invest, and many of you are already here. But I also encourage my Colombian fellows in this call to bid for this paper because you're betting here not only in a bond but really in an effort to reduce Colombia's carbon footprint. And I'm sure that that is a mandate that resonates in all the credit, sustainability, and boards of all the investors in Colombia. So although it's a local market, this is an effort that outreaches to every single investor. We have investors from New Zealand. We have investors from Australia, from the Middle East. Europe is our largest investor, foreign investor in tests as a whole. We have in Canada, we have in the United States, in Latin America, and domestically, we also invite pension funds, insurance companies, commercial banks. We hope to have picked a tenor a 10 year that really fits into everybody's portfolio. Thank you, Andres. Thank you, Shema. Thank you, BBUVA. Thank you, World Bank and IDD, which are right there in the, in the background for this support. And we hope to see you in the auction on September 29th, that Wednesday. And we hope to beat that 2.5 bit to cover ratio and be able to over allocate and, and get this effort going in the primary dealer system.